This is the soundtrack of our lives. Streaming live. Commercial free internet radio. It's 8 p.m. It's Tuesday night. I got my laptop on. And I feel alright. I got a few joints rolled. And my munchies made. Got my headphones on and I close the door. Don't disturb me. It's time to stand up tall and say some things about the shitty world we're living in with the boys at Rack Contour's news. To Rack Contour's. To Rack Contour's. To Rack Contour's news. Rack on Rack. Right, this is Colin Johnson from East Coast Resistance, and you're listening to Raconteurs News. Good evening, and welcome to Raconteurs News. It is uh, Tuesday, the 18th of September, I do believe. And, um, well, the, the world is becoming more <laughs> and more and more nuts as we speak. Um, so uh, <laughs> we've uh, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. I'd just like to apologise for last night. We had Neil Sanders lined up, but uh, unfortunately he had an emergency. We've rebooked that. It's going to be October the 3rd, 7 till 9, um, on, on the Tuesday on Raconteurs News on 7 till 9 on uh, Tuesday the 3rd of October. Um, and uh, we are going to be moving from... Eight until ten until two uh, times two. We're going to start at seven, seven and, until, until nine, nine in future. That's going to start next week with Andrew K. Fletcher. He's always our guest. Um, but um, we've got a great guest tonight. Um, needs no introduction. He was holding ten fingers up at me a, a minute ago. I don't know exactly why. Nine. Oh, nineteenth. Is it the 19th? All oh, right, OK. Oh, there you go. It's the 19th. Uh, I, I think I've, uh, I'm, I'm stuck at yesterday, but uh, we've got a great guest tonight. I, I, I've met this guy a few times, but I've never really sat down and just chatted to him. So it's going to be, uh, it should be pretty good tonight. We've got a two-pronged show. We're going to, first of all, talk about uh, the, the things that are on his radar at the moment, the, the work that he's doing. And then in the second hour, we're going to get into the Mandela effect, which... Um, it's going to be very interesting. Something I'm really interested in. I'm, I'm quite intrigued by it. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's welcome our guest tonight. Good evening, Mark Salon. Mark, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How's yourself? Oh, I'm very well. Very well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mark. Um, it, it, it's great to have you on the show. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not bum-licking like uh, some people do. Uh, definitely not. But uh, yeah, it's great to have you on the show. Like I said, we've we, we've we've met before, um, but we've only spoke really briefly. And so tonight it's going to be a great insight into into what you're doing. So so what 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 you do? What are you into at the moment? What's your what's on your radar? Well, the, the, the big thing I'm going to hold just a little bit for a little bit later on, you know, about 10 minutes or so, because the, the thing that I think because it's a news channel, what we've got to really be talking about is the uh, the London governmental attacks. Um, they were the it was the worst attempt at a terror attack I've seen ever. And I think even those that are still unaware of what's going on are asking questions about this one because it was just so bad. I have to agree with you. I mean, what are they doing? Are they, are they taking their eye off the ball or do you think this is deliberate? Because that that really was the most pathetic thing. Um, we, we, all we had is um, propaganda uh, that, uh, and we were, we, we were given a woman that uh, that had got toothache in the cartoon strip you know you know that that's all we were given that that's what we were told was a terrorist attack so what what's your take on it well i mean you can see the the alleged and i do say that very much so alleged bomb a plastic bucket with a little bag i mean and it had some from what i can remember it had some christmas lights in there what what what's that all about it'll mean something to them because it all oh, everything it's like we're talking about the woman with the bandage around her head. Well, 
that looked totally ridiculous to us. But I bet you, in their world, that's a sign of something, and that's why they had to do it. Because everything they do and put out has a meaning, uh, particularly with the Freemasons, because they tend to talk more in symbols than they do in actual words. So I, I suspect that will have something to do with that. Having said that, a massive fireball burnt down, you know, went down this coach and injured 22, allegedly injured 22 people. And yet from where the bag is, there's not a singe anywhere in sight. The woman that's all over the media, if you look closely, she's carrying a, um, a scarf. And some of the eagle-eyed ones out there have picked up that in between the scarf uh, tassels, there's the price tag. So it seems like she had a brand new prop bought for this actual event. <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it, it it does seem it does seem a little bit strange um it, it sort of reminded me of uh, on seven seven when you had that uh that person that was allegedly injured and they had uh, like a full face mask on uh with just their eyes cut out and the nose and all that that that's what it reminded me of i mean it was farcical it, it in in um in the extreme really i mean this this woman looked like she'd been to the dentist in a, in a, a, a something uh, it's something out of the beano you know where they they put the, you've got the the the, the you, someone's gone to the dentist and they have this um thing this bandage around the head with the little bow on the top it it just seemed farcical it just seemed farcical i don't i don't even know how anybody even really falls for it anymore i mean weren't were they supposed to be like 20 odd people injured and, and yet there's no no damage no scorching or anything 22 apparently injured and over 200 potentially could have been injured if it had gone off properly um well potentially we could all walk out on the street tomorrow and get run down but you know we're going to we're going to look around and make sure that don't happen so potential injuries it's just the mainstream media trying to hype up the uh, the amount of injuries or possible injuries to make it look more like a, a more fearful uh, attack. And of course, at the end of the day, the attack was nothing to do with what they're claiming. It's all about them getting police on the streets, armed police, army on the streets and shutting down the Internet. Because right after that, May May's come out and said, we're going to need to uh, have a word with Google uh, and Facebook and all that because they're going to need to do more about stopping these uh, terrorists communicating. Uh, and in a video I put out about it very shortly afterwards, I said it's dead easy to stop terrorists commu communicating, cut the government's internet off and terrorists can't communicate. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and this seems to be the agenda across, across Europe. I mean, I've recently been in Spain, and where, I would well, I was in Benidorm, and along the beach was it was there were armed police with submachine guns. It seemed to it seemed to be like a theme. It seemed to be like people being um, uh, acclimated to that, so they're acclimatized to to accepting that there's going to be armed police on the beach. And I did notice as well that that, that um, there were uh, on a few occasions some girls came out of bars and wanted to have the photographs taken with these um, with these officers with these submachine guns, and they were really. Um, not very accommodating. They were just so, sort of saying no and everything. So it, it seems that not only are they um, that they are their presence is being um, introduced. It's also that they're they're that they're not. They don't even seem to be human. You know. You understand what I mean? Yeah. They they're um, so indoctrinated into the system. You're all the enemy. Stay away from me. I'm doing my job here. I, I I'm doing job for everyone, and it's a good job even if it means not being friendly to anyone, because uh, at the end of the day, we're dressed in black because we're here to scare the crap out of you. Mm. Yeah, and they, they, and they do appear like stormtroopers, don't they? Um, they, they they're absolutely they, unrecognisable. I've, I've noticed because uh, we've, um, in our house, um, we, we're up pretty early and in the morning, we usually pop the TV on while we're getting uh, while we're getting dressed and stuff. Um, Forgive him. Uh, and and the bills started to come on um, from, right from the very start. So the bills come on from the very start, and the difference between the 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 the, the attire that they're wearing at that time, which start I think it started sometime in mid eighties, yeah. So now it's is completely completely different. It's, it's completely militarized now. This is why they're all wearing black now. I mean, it used it was a well known saying. Oh, here's the boys in blue. Well, now it is the boys in black. 
And of course, black is a, a dark colour, as you, you're aware, but that's also to put you in fear, because if, if you do watch any of these TV propaganda shows, then you'll always see the, the good guys are in black. You know, the black, police in the black robes and even the black um, FBI, CIA, it's all in black, but they're there for your benefit. So nothing to worry about. They're there for your benefit, except, of course, the more you look into it, the sooner you realise that they're not actually there for our benefit at all. They're actually there to take control. And in fact, I was looking on Facebook today and it was on about Churchill. I think it was not about around about 1910 where he sent the army in to, um, and, and they massacred a load of striking miners in Wales because they'd stopped working. And what, what most don't get from that is because you're a slave, so you can't stop working. And if you do stop working, we'll send the police in or the enforcers, as they're more rightly termed, and they'll, you'll work for them or we'll send the army and we'll shoot you. Yeah, and and, and it, 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 this this. We see this as well in um, places like uh, the, the, the fracking sites where people are, they call themselves protectors, and I believe they are protectors. They are protecting the environment and the, the protected people. But what, what, what we're seeing is is more and more that the these people, these people that call themselves police officers, which are public servants, let's, there's no two ways about it. The public servants, but what they're doing is they're serving the corporate, the corporate uh, interests. Well, well, you say the public servants, but I, I don't think they act like public servants. Uh, I don't think any of them that are supposedly public servants act anything like public servants. Uh, there was a, a video I put out recently with it about Nottingham's police and their disgraceful behaviour. Uh, they broke the law numerous times this was to do with a civil matter uh they even were going to use a red key to smash a door open because of a dispute over uh, the electric bill and the police are now smashing doors open in a civil matter breaching their oath breaching section 2026 of the courts and justice act and they were informed of this but they are going to pay for that because whose place they were at will be going after them and has already started on uh, prosecuting pro prosecuting them all. Yeah, well, I had uh, I had South Yorkshire Police burst smash the way use the big red key into my house. It's um, it's it's on uh, YouTube if anybody wants to find it. South Yorkshire Police criminal gang. It's in there. That were a couple of years ago. I, that situation is in hand, and the people, the the officers, the, the sorry, the the public servants that broke their way into my house are going to be dealt with. There's a, absolutely no doubt about that at all. So, but yeah, like you say, it's, it's, it seems that we're, um, we're now, when, when somebody says to me, cause I, I had this, I used to have this thing and I'd say to police officers, I'd say, you're a public servant. Um, I'm a member of the public and I don't allow my servants to talk to me like that whenever they gave me, um, you know, any greed for anything like that. But now you're you're completely on edge, aren't you? Because you know that they'll use any excuse. And Section Five uh, Public Order is is that they, they their go to uh, statue, and they'll they'll arrest you on that. You know, even if just standing up for yourself. That that or breach of the peace is the favourite one. The, the, the amount of times they threaten and arrest people for breach of the peace when it's actually them that's been breaching the peace is absolutely disgraceful because a lot of times it's it's quite peaceful uh, stopping others doing whatever they want to do, knowing that it's wrong, and you're peace, peaceably trying to stop them, and they, the police come up heavy-handed, mob-handed, and will just kick seven bells out of you and let them do whatever they want. And of course, we don't we, we don't really get any recourse in court as well, do you? I mean, what 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 has your experience has recently been of of the courts? Have you have you had any experience of the courts? Because we we all know that they that they they're really corrupt and dodgy. Well, I mean, I, mean, I must admit, I've had a couple of good experiences. To be fair, one was uh, twenty sixteen January when I was in court for a three week trial for going on Tom Crawford's roof, and we got found not guilty. Uh, the main reason for that being, again, they couldn't produce the warrant in court. The, the judge ordered the CPS to bring into court the next day or even get it sent over today, a certified copy of the warrant. He left the court, contacted Nottinghamshire Court, asking them to send a certified copy over. And he had to stand up in court and say there was not a judge in Nottingham would, that would sign a, the warrant to say that that was a certified copy. 
And then the, what br brought the trial to an end was on the, the day before it ended, the judge ordered the CPS to bring into court the next day the warrant, the original warrant they'd used to kick Tom Crawford out of the house and they couldn't do it. Next day, the CPS stood up and said, we offer no evidence. Um, we've got found out, not, we've got found not guilty on that. Then they tried to do me for drunk and disorderly when I was simply challenging them, their, their attitudes. Um, they were in uh, baseball caps and whatnot with dogs and... I, I'm sure you know, but they can they can, they will say the dog has indicated you've got something on you, and that's it. You, you there's no way of saying you haven't. If they say the dog says you have, then they will search you regardless. And that's what they've been using in town. And I was particularly gestating at them for doing exactly this and searching two guys that were just sat on the bench. Nothing was found on them, by the way. But then the uh, the cops took a, a abridgment to me and eventually beat me up. But fortunately, that was on camera, and I managed to chuck the camera. I thought to someone to grab, but apparently it dropped on the floor and somebody picked it up for me, thankfully. And then when that court case came around uh, and the judge saw the video, it, because according to the police, I'd been UF in this and UF in that and UF F this all the way. That, that was their statements. The video was played, not a F word inside. That's another standard procedure they use where they, they claim that you've been swearing, effing this and effing that. And I would have got, I would definitely have been found guilty if I hadn't been recording that. And as it was, I was found not guilty. Uh, but was there, was there any recourse for the, because obviously the, the officers were, had made false statements. Was there any, any recourse for I, those? I warned both constables, because office is a military term. Um, a, a constable is a, 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 a constable that has one job, prevent a breach of the peace that's his job that's it an officer like i say is a military term and that's when they come in enforcing for banks and anyone else they want to uh, I, I cautioned both of them before they gave evidence that if they committed perjury they could go to prison uh, and uh, i i would ask be asking the cps to prosecute them they, they carried on live through the teeth which was proven when the video was played the next one come in i cautioned them again live through the teeth and I was found not guilty. The cops get up and walk out of court. The CPS refused to charge them for perjury. So the, the, the CPS actually refused. You did ask them to to, yes. uh, yep. to, to charge them with perjury. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't need to ask them. Then the CPS, they've just seen two, two cops lie under oath uh, and commit perjury. And the CPS, just nothing. Ah, they do it all the time. Oh, well, that's great then. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems to be the attitude that we get these days, isn't it? I mean, we, we, the, with the CPS, anybody who's um, supposed to be in authority policing the police, as it were, I mean, they're, they're pretty toothless, aren't they? Well, the CPS, it didn't used to be CPS. If, if you remember back many years ago, it used to be the cop that would arrest you, would do all the paperwork and decide whether to charge you or let you go. And that was it. And it ran very smoothly. And then they brought the CPS in. And the CPS are actually there as a gatekeeper to protect anyone of any of their friends that they don't want prosecuting, um, like Greville Janner, for instance, uh, or any of them in any of the pedos in Parliament. They, the CPS will not prosecute any of them because uh, Alison Saunders, I think it is at the, the very top, she is a gatekeeper uh, and, and is there to protect, um, well, all the criminals that, as, that have been looking into this for many years know are there. And, and this criminal activity, it's not just it, it's not just a, a small amount of criminal activity. I mean, you mentioned Tom Crawford's case uh, uh, just a little while ago. Um, and, and anybody that's that's followed that and seen that can see that the, this criminal activity in, in, involved in that. But how do we how do we get them to um, to actually acknowledge that and to actually uh, get get a remedy in court? I don't think you can get a remedy in court. I really don't. I think the, the the only way to get it out there is for us to be always have your camera on you to film it and put it out there because the, I mean this is this is why um, they they're panicking at the moment over this latest one because they know it's so obvious. Uh, now there's two I've got two train of thoughts behind that. Either it was rushed together and that's why it was so badly performed, or they knew exactly what they were doing. And in their own way, they actually want us to wake up from this nightmare that we've been living in. Not all of them, but some of them do have had enough of the lies that we've all been told all our lives. 
And I do mean from the cradle to grave, we've been lied to, even by our parents, because they were lied to. Everyone that's been trying to say something to you has been lied to. And I, 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 I fully admit, I was fully lied to. Um, I, I'd probably get a lot of stuff wrong now, even now. But I do a lot more research into it and try and make sure it's correct what I'm doing. Although that that uh, London uh, fiasco was just, I didn't even need to do any research in that. I, you, you could just see it right from the off. That was rubbish. And, and they're getting more and more obvious as well, aren't they? I mean, it, it's, it, it, it does seem that in order for you to believe um, the, the, the things that are um, portrayed on us, um, the, the, these, terror, these so-called terrorist attacks, um, it, it does take more and more stupidity to actually... Uh, and I don't, know, I don't, I don't want to use that. I don't want to use that word, but that, it, 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 that's the only word I can really think of. That that people who believe this uh, really have got to be stupid. The the problem is, it's not the stupid ones. It's the agents and the shills. Because it, it, just as a lot of these are starting to think, well, that didn't look right, and I've heard a lot of people saying this is dodgy. Someone will come along and say, oh, I know someone whose whose son was was injured in that blast, and straight away you think, oh, it must have been real then. When it's just them putting that out there just to try and build on the fact that it must have been real because someone's got injured, but they'll never back it up with any any names or anything like that. Um, it's it's like the um, the Manchester one. They had security staff outside the main entrance where you would come from the actual arena into that place where the bomb went off, stopping anyone going in there because all the crisis actors were already in there waiting for it to be supposedly go off. Uh, and that, that's documented, that is, from witnesses that were actually in, this, in the stadium were saying they tried to get out. That was the nearest exit and it was blocked by security staff. So we had to go different exits. And of course, the shills will say that was because the, there was a bomb go, gone off and they didn't want you going in there. Well, this they were there prior to any explosion. So there's pre-knowledge. Mm. Well, we've had uh, we had uh, Jason Green on and Nick Collarstrom on um, on Raconteurs News um, in the um, aftermath of the Manchester um incident shall we call it um and and they they both got similar sort of in fact we had um what else do we have on uh, we had um anyway we had somebody else on but we had a few people on on the show after that and uh, they all they, they've all and i've actually uh i've actually um interviewed uh, uh, spoken to a witness who was at the uh, westminster one um, again, another one which doesn't seem to have to, to be. <laughs> it doesn't seem to to fit in with the, the official narrative. Well, after the Westminster one in Nottingham, we've got Trent Bridge. They put barriers up all across the bridge so that cars couldn't get onto the pavement anymore. Just more fear. That's all they're trying to instill in everyone: fear, fear, fear. These terrorists are real, so you should be scared of them. And they are real. It's just they're not who you think they are. Mm. Right, Andy's just uh, popped in the chat room. Uh, Ollie Damagard, yeah, we did have Ollie Damagard on as well, um, uh, uh, and Nick Collarstrom, and, and Jason Green as well, who's a, a compatriot of mine here in Sheffield um, and, and does a lot of stuff on terrorism. So we're, we're, we've uh, we, we've we've gone through the we've gone through the terrorist nonsense that uh, that, that that's been happening recently. In uh, sort of started in March, didn't it? I think we're March. 22nd when it was the first one was that the Man that was the Manchester incident wasn't it yeah, 22nd of March uh, 22 people by a man who's 22 years old uh, it, it, numerology seems to be huge with them yeah 322 is the secret society over in America that uh, Bush went to um, this it, numerology is very big and speaking of numerology coming up this Saturday coming is a, 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 a something that's not been not happened for several thousand years there's an alignment coming up that well this could be i i actually don't think that much will change some are saying um we're going to um move up to a higher dimension some are saying th there's loads of story that just if you just go on youtube and and search for 23rd uh, 20 23rd of september you'll find loads of videos now You'd have to go through them videos because most of them will be rubbish. 
some will be misdirection. A lot of them will have truth in, but then take you off their route. So it's down to you to actually go through them and decide what you think it's all about. But there is a big alignment coming up. And um, the last time it happened was a very interesting time. And I'm not going to say what that was that happened, but let's just say it was very interesting shortly afterwards. Ah, oh, well, you can't really, you can't really leave us there, lying, you know, laid way into uh, to try and work out what what it was that happened. It, it's interesting for me because um, it's a big weekend for me. I'm um, I'm a Sheffield Wednesday supporter, and it's uh, the Sheffield Derby, the first one in six years on Sunday. So I, I'm hoping that the, uh, the, the the some of the predictions of the end of the world on September 23rd aren't going to happen. And also, September 23rd happens to be my dad's birthday as well. So uh, I'd, I'd hate for him to be responsible for that. So. I, don't, I don't think it'll be anything violent uh, or dramatic as such, although whether information is going to be released is a big possibility. And whether Others are going to step forward and start admitting certain things have been going on is possible as well. There's what's happening is we're we're about to enter full, fully into Aquarius. And we've just been through five years through a dark patch in the universe, which is and I think you could probably agree that the past five years have been pretty dark in general anyway. Well, we're coming out of that on the 23rd. Uh Apparently, everything should start to get better. And that, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Well, I think we all hope that, don't we? We all hope things are going to get better. Like you said, things have been pretty dark for a few years. Um, but but there's always uh, beacons of light in, in this darkness. And, um, and and people like yourself who, who, you know, try and get the, the information out there and try to, to help people as well. So what what's... Um, if we sort of move on from the end of the world on Saturday, this coming weekend, and let's hope that it doesn't happen on Saturday because uh, I, I'm really looking forward to the football match on Sunday. Uh, but uh, moving on from that, what uh, what what else is going on in 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 your world? What 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 are you concentrating on? Well, if you do any searching on the, again on YouTube, you'll find there's a lot of videos out there at the moment with um, them saying that they've managed to access their birth certificate bond account. Right. And um, without giving too much information about it, uh, I've seen someone that has shown me them access their account. Okay. Well, that's quite that's quite a, a, um, a development. Um, are, are, we, are you going to uh, – well, what is it? Uh, experimental at the moment i mean how do we it's, yeah it's all it's all experimental at the moment it's all it's to do with a certain few things um but I, i'm sitting back waiting to see what happens because over in america someone accessed it but was um i won't say greedy because there is an unlimited amount in there but they bought themselves an rv which is like a camper van for five hundred thousand okay. dollars and they bought it and they got it and then the FBI came, raided him, arrested him and confiscated the van. Even though the account is in his name, using his, well, over here, it's national insurance number. They still came arrested him because they know if we all access it, well, end of fear, end of worry, end of bills, end of debt. Uh, and that the debt is the thing that they've been keeping in control with the most forever and ever. I mean, I, I can remember back when I was, I, I, I was a, a good slave. And I was thinking, yeah, I've got a great credit reference. Didn't realise that meant I was a really, really good slave. That's all it means. And so when you change from living in that make-believe world of uh, pleasing your master, and your master is that, that bloke that has that carrot at the end of a stick just in front of your nose saying, keep a good credit reference and you, you, you know, you'll, you'll get credit. Well, yeah, but... If you keep a good credit reference, then you're, you're doing exactly as you're told and you're the perfect slave. That's that's what it boils down to at the end of the day, that those with a good credit reference are the perfect slave. And some will come back and say, yeah, but I, I want credit in the future. It's because they don't realise that. And I'm, I know I'm talking to a, a, a crowd here that do know that money isn't real. Money is made up by the Bank of England. They print 
some special signs on some pieces of paper or plastic as it is these days. And they say that's worth so much amount when it costs 10 pence to make. But they're telling you it's worth five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever. So and it's backed by nothing, as we all know. So it, it, this is why, it, of course, it's called fiat, because it's it's worthless bits of paper. In fact, it will get to the stage. It could get to the stage soon where you're actually burning these bits of paper to keep warm. And of course, that could be a reason why they're changing them over to plastic, because plastic will give off toxic fumes if you burn them. Well, yeah, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? I mean, this this move to plastic is um, is interesting in itself. Like you say, um, it, it, the 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 note itself is worthless. The the only value given to it is what we give it ourselves, the the slaves. It's what we perceive it to be value. We 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 know you can take it into a shop and you can buy food with it. You can take it to a pub and you can buy beer with it. But that's only because those at the other side, those that are taking that money off you, believe that they can put that in a till, go and spend it themselves later. And they can at the moment. But what are the taxes that we are all under, which no one ever seems to talk about, is inflation. Inflation is a tax. That yeah. is all it is. It's nothing to do with uh, keeping the, the, everything in equilibrium. It's about increasing the amount you have to pay for everything. So your wages have to go up. And they've done a very snide, snide little thing here by making sure your wages do not go up, batting inflation, because then you'd be on par and everything would be cool. Except, of course, it still wouldn't be on par because although your, although your wages were going up with inflation, the inflation that is passed on to the gas bills and electric bills are made up, again, made up inflation on your gas and electric. I mean, when they upped the price recently by 12.5%, they, they would have gone for 25% if they could have got away with it, but 25% is a quarter. 12.5% is an eighth, and they figured that we'd never think too much about that. So they put the bills up by an eighth, and they do this sort of thing almost every year or every other year. Whichever company it is, they're all saying, we're not going to put the bills up, and then suddenly they do. It's like this, whoever it was, I can't remember the name of them now, but they said they weren't going to put the, the bills up, and then they back, backtracked on themselves and did put the bills up. And interesting, actually, I've got something for uh, Kev here a, a little bit. I just got a, someone sent me a, um, a a letter they'd received from British Gas stating that they don't have a consumer credit license because he was asking them, well, if you're allegedly supplying me with gas and then I pay at a later date, you're you're giving me credit till that later date. So you do need a consumer credit license. And they said, no, we don't. And they replied saying they haven't got one and they don't need one when I believe they actually do need one. And, and uh, I say do need one. No one should have any licenses for anything. But these are the big boys that are screwing everyone over. They should definitely have a consumer credit license. The fact they haven't, um, as far as I'm concerned, just proves what, what those that have been following all this sort of stuff knows that they're all criminals. Yeah, I think I think we're, we're all in agreement on that, that they are all criminals, um, all these corporations. And, and that's not the individual shareholders or anybody that's involved with that. It's just that the, the, the way that these companies and the systems that they put in place are set up and the systems that are put in place by the, the police that help these people to, um, to, to, to rob uh, ordinary people of their wealth. And I think that, that that's I think that's what that's what it is. And what you see, I've got this um, I've got this belief that um, all these cuts that are being placed upon people. So what what, what we did is um, we we had working tax credits and child tax credits and all these different tax credits that were subsidising people's income. Um, it, so as a result, incomes have, haven't risen because they've not needed to because people have been subsidised. Now they're cutting back on all these um, subsidies, uh, these working tax credits, these child tax credits and all that sort of thing. And then the interest rates are going to start going up. And that is when people are going to start really, really struggling. What do you think to that? You're absolutely correct there. Um and here's some, here's why they do all these different chopping and changing from uh, universal credit to PIP, pip or, or whatever names they give all these different things. And this this should be a, a, an awake moment for anyone that is on in them situations. The reason they change it from one one to another is because when they do, they actually change the contract that you have. And and 
what's more, you no longer. Ha- this is why they can um, stop you getting your be- your benefits because it's no longer the DWP that is dealing with you. When you sign for this new one, whether it's PIP or uh, whatever they, they are, you're actually registering with a, a different corporation. And this corporation, he can, they can stop you because you've signed a contract with them and not with the DWP. The DWP cannot stop money be t- being taken off you because it's your it's your entitlement, although they do keep changing the words and their favourite one is to call it a benefit when it's always an entitlement because an entitlement can't be taken away. So all they did was change one word from entitlement to benefit because then if it's a benefit, I can take your benefit off you. And that's exactly what they did. When they start changing all these things, it's a different contract with no longer the DWP, but a private corporation that gives their staff bonuses for kicking people off any type of uh, money that they are due. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got a few uh, quotes in the uh, chat room. We've got you, Unique Lee. Um, oh, go blow me. It keeps going, it keeps running away. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's like blood on your hands. I say it's more a case of we. Um, I don't know what that's all about. Um, a non four, four, three, five, eight. It's a game. We're all playing it exactly. And uh, the, the, the uniquely has made the point that the DWP are a whole different ball game. Uh, but but you're right. They, they, they keep changing it because when you are. Um, granted an entitlement like you say you know when you know when you make a claim and you're granted an entitlement um that that, that that that's a binding contract between you and that that government department yeah. or that private company that's running that government department and, and so you're entitled to that but if they keep changing it like you say um it, it, then the contract can be changed at any point and which is why we're getting people that are uh, that 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 are being who are clearly entitled, but are getting told that they're screwed not. Over. Screwed. They get screwed over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, disabled people, uh, people that uh, uh, people that need help. Really, I mean, in any any sane society, should be looking after the people that need helping. After all. That the, the, they are a product of that society, and so that society has got a responsibility to look after them. Uh, but but it seems that that's being dragged away uh, more and more and more. Uh, and for any little um, misdemeanor like you know missing a, a, a um, an appointment because perhaps you had an hospital appointment or something like that, means that you're, you're going to lose out financially. And it, it's just a, a mean, mean, horrible system that that, that we're uh, that we're putting up with. Well, I mean, I, I'm not particularly fond of human rights because they are just rights of a monster. But everyone's human rights are breached when they get stopped having any money. Because you read that, I think there's only 26, 25 or 26 points in the Human Rights Act. But in that, it says you're allowed to have a, a decent standard of living, food, shelter. Uh, and when they're stopping these benefits, they, they, they're throwing people onto the, onto the streets and they're, they're stopping them from having shelter uh, and decent living standards. So they're actually breaching human rights, but no one ever s- seems to have taken them to court for it. Not that I, I would say that you could win, although in theory you would win hands down. But uh, again, it's slipping back a little to the court stuff we we're talking about. You, you, that They will stick a gatekeeper judge in whenever needed to be. And I've seen this in a case just a month or two back where the, the I've been here for the case and the judge was coming down bang, bang to rights on the, cl- the claimant and against the, or the other way around, bang to rights against the, against the criminals anyway, the corporation. And then they put off the judgment for a month and obviously they'd had a, a phone call from a secret handshake brigade because they'd been told... Uh, no, you can't rule this one. Even though they, they're right and they've got us, you've got to rule against them, and that's what they did. So you, you can't get justice in a court. If it's just you and a little matter, yeah, maybe. Maybe you've got, you got a chance. But if you're taking on a corporation, this was a big corporation that was being taken on, and they had the evidence that proved they were wrong, but the judge, even though, because I've seen the transcript as well, and you read the transcript and then you read the judgment, Absolute opposite to the to the transcript. Mm. Yeah, 
so I do. They also put up other obstacles as well, don't they? I mean, it, it, to get to even get to be heard in court, it, it's going to cost you a significant amount of money. And if you're in a position where um, you're on benefits or, or uh, you, you know, you're perhaps disabled, you're unemployed or whatever, it, it, that that's another obstacle. I mean, I've got I've got one at the moment. I've got um, a company chasing me for eighty one grand um for uh well it was it was due to um i got um a statutory uh, sorry a um i got a, a cost certificate awarded against me for 81 grand with this company and they they're after me and they, they, there's absolutely nothing they can do there's no no way they can get 81 grand out of me um but you know for me it it's the, the, the amount of money it's going to cost me to have this set aside it is I'd, I'd prefer to just sit, sit sit just sit it out and just you know not even not even deal with them well there's i suspect there's no way they can get any anyway but uh they will try they'll 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 send all the threatening letters and they may even resort to bailiffs i, I don't know because i don't know the fullings and outs but at the end of the day uh the no bailiff or police constable can break into a house unless they are aware there's a they've chased a criminal and he's gone in and locked the door behind them or they're aware there's a criminal inside the house then even the police can't break in the house and yet they'd still do it yeah and, and that's the thing as well isn't it i mean we but again if you want to take them to court it's going to cost you it's going to cost you money you know when you're, you're just an ordinary ordinary citizen ordinary going about your, your, your daily business and trying to just live your life well um, and these coppers come they smash the way into your house and, and and for you to get any recourse it's going to cost you money that should be sending alarm bells out to everyone because if you've got to pay for justice the rich are always going to get their justice and we're never going to get any justice. No, no. And, and that's, and that's quite, that's quite right. I mean, have you, have you had any, um, have you had any uh, success stories, you know, with um, getting people bailiffs or coppers or anything like that and getting them into court or, or, you know, um... we're work, we're working on some at the moment. Um, this will come to a point at some point because the who's involved simply will not let up on it ever um and they're, they're like a, a dog with a bone you try taking a, a bone off a dog you see how they'll turn well th th these uh, th this lot that are dealing with this are of the same mindset um and they know the stuff and they they've got video evidence where um certain rules and regulations have been read out to them and they were put on notice that if they ignored them they were in breach of these rules and regulations, uh, and it's just now it's just a matter of time. But having said that, uh, the, the group I'm talking about have so many other things going on at the moment. Again, a lot to do with the court sort of thing. Uh, and the, I take it, have you heard of the Gap Court? No. Well, that's a new thing we found recently in Nottingham. They're calling it the Gap Court, which means it's separate from the actual court. Um, and one of the things to ask there is, where do they get their jurisdiction from? It, 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 they hold it in a magistrate's court, just like you're going to a magistrate's, but it's a gap court. Uh, and they uh, they put in what they expect you to um, to plead, whether you're going to plead guilty, not guilty, no case to answer, or so, I'm not a slave, I'm not coming for anything. Give it, give us some idea. Of, I mean, I, I've never heard of this gap court thing. So, give us some idea of what it is. Is is it it's like a, a pre magistrate's court sort of? Hearing? No, it's, it's it's on par with a magistrate's court, except it's totally unlawful. Okay. Uh, they they have to have they have to get permission from a certain body, and to do that, they've got to show that they have somewhere. To, to perform these acts and that it's all legal and above board. But uh, I don't know if many of you know this, all the magistrates and county courts were um, were abolished in it's either 2006 or 2008. So we haven't got a magistrate's court or a county court in the UK anymore. Well, so, so I, I, I didn't I didn't read about this. Um, so um, well, they they're, not, they're not going to want to put it out. What they've done... They've um, 
they've basically moved it over to America. And so it's now run from over there totally unlawfully because you can't run something in this country from a foreign country because that's, that's, that you don't have the jurisdiction from over there to do it over here. But they're doing it anyway. And if you start looking into who is actually at the top of these courts, you'll find there's one man or woman that is in charge of the court, but it's not a court. But because we knew it used to be a, a court or thought it used to be a court, you still go there thinking, well, of course it's a court. Look, it says magistrate's court must be a court. That's just words that's used to confuse us. They, they have no jurisdiction anymore. Every court, every mags and county court is acting unlawfully. Uh, and you need, the one you need to go after is you search whoever is at the very top of each court and you'll find it's one man or woman and they hold full liability for everything that goes off. And that's why recently in Nottingham, uh, Hooper was the, uh, the um, oh, what was he, the, he the head of the magistrate's court. I can't remember what his, his technical term is. He's resigned after something one of my friends put into them. So we are getting rid of them. But then, of course, there's so many of them in the background just to step forward and carry on again. And then when you catch them out, they'll just resign and put someone else in. But the fact that we're getting them to um, Hooper, Hooper, it was a big, big um, baddie in the court. Uh, and, and just to put some clarity as to why I suggest that, the uh, illegal and unlawful raid at Tom's where they evicted them, that was called Operation Hooper. Right. OK, so do you think that this was tied in with this this geezer then? This uh, this um... It was definitely tied in with him. And it, they'd been working on it for about five, four or five months. They'd been planning this. That's that. that basically, they've been colluding. The court, the police and the banks were all colluding together. And they came up with a date to go en masse in force to evict Tom, even though. As, as said in our court case, there was no lawful or legal warrant available. Therefore, every cop, everyone that turned up and aided and invested that committed a criminal offence of uh, burglary, um, conspiracy to commit uh, criminal damage, commit conspiracy to commit criminal damage. That, that I could just reel off a load of the crimes that were committed by the police and by so-called security because... They weren't bailiffs. They were security bust in from Birmingham. Nightclub bouncers were bust in for the day as security. Right. Mm. So that game, they have no jurisdiction. But we're in a situation, though, aren't we, where we're, we're, we've got one court is not going to say that another court is um, did, didn't have the jurisdiction to do something. So we're, again, we're we're at the mercy of these people, these these pedos, these uh, these corrupt people that are, are in the system, the, the judges and, and what have you. We're, we're at their mercy, aren't we? So it, it, how how do we how do we counter that? How do we? Well, we we are to a degree, and I'm not sure if I should mention this, but uh, I'll, someone will give me a nod whether it's okay to mention it or not. We're working on a pack that may just sort this corruption out once and for all for when they break the law, when the magistrates and the um, the uh, clerk and that break the law, we're working on something that could bring an end to that once and for all and end them as well, their, end their careers, and may even end up with them in, in prison. Oh, right. Well, that's I'm not, I'm not been giving a, a nod but, uh, uh, to say any more on that, so I won't say any more on that. OK, <laughs> I'm sure uh, I'm sure the person that, uh, is, that should give you the nod will give you the nod when it's uh, when it's appropriate to do so. So yeah. how's Tom anyway? How, how is he? How is he going on and how's, how's his campaign going along? Uh, well, just been speaking to today, actually. Um, we've got a court case coming up uh, uh, very soon. Uh, we've just been discussing... Uh, how our tactics in the actual case and uh, obviously I can't talk about that because it's ongoing case uh, but after it's don't worry you'll see the videos come out afterwards uh, and well from what's happened already there's going to be some people laughing their tits off and there's going to be some people cringing under any rock they can get under and I, I can't say any more than that 
Okay, well, I, I'm sure the people that are going to be cringing are the ones that deserve to be cringing. Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, but, but you do have a you, you do have a few ad adversaries, don't you? Uh, knocking about around the internet, I I I, I see some of your stuff um, posted on Facebook and things like that. But you do have. You do have quite a, a, a number of people that that uh, that knock you about these things. How do you deal with them? I just ignore them. I simply ignore them and block them. One thing I've learned is never argue with a fool, otherwise you become the fool. And you can spot these straight away. And as soon as, soon as they come on with negative stuff, I can't be all. I, I, I've got so much on my plate. I can't be bothered to have a discussion with someone who I know is either an idiot, a troll, or just is brain dead to know, to what's going on. So I don't waste my energy with them. I just block them, delete their comments, and continue. Um, yeah, I, I get trolled all the time, but I'm quite fortunate. I've been trolled for so long that I've got so used to it now, I just ignore them as best I can, unless it gets really serious like this case that we've got coming up, which is going to be uh, interesting. And uh, what, what about uh, you, you? You used to be involved with the uh, website, um, the forum, Get Out of Debt Free. You, uh, have you moved on to something else? Is there some another a different? Have you got another forum? Well, I, I got I got banned for telling everyone that it had been sold when they they because they well, I knew it had been taken over, but they said it was going to carry on running just as it is. And I even got an, a, a contact with someone saying, "Yeah, I'm looking forward to work with you." I never spoke, never heard from him ever again. But ah, uh, so. Then there was a whole section of the forum that had disappeared. So I sent an email to who was supposedly in charge now. And I waited and nothing up. I sent another email and nothing up. Two weeks I was waiting for just a response to what had happened. I didn't get any response. So straight away they'd lied and gone back on what they'd said they were going to do. Everything was going to be smooth and everything carry on. So then it was time to let everyone else know that it had been sold by then. Um, and then within a matter of a day or so of me letting out, letting everyone know that it'd been sold, they banned me because they didn't want me to give any more information out. And to be honest, I I, I was leaving at that weekend anyway. I'd already notified the moder moderators that I was going to be leaving at that weekend. I think it was a Thursday when they, Wednesday or Thursday when they, they banned me. But I'd already notified that I was leaving anyway because I could see where it was going. Um, and I, I didn't actually set anything else up. But some of the longtime members... I've now set up another forum uh, and I, I'm a moderator in there. Not that I do that much in there. I, I just post stuff and occasionally if I, if I can see there's a, some struggling with some sort of question, I'm, I'll jump in and help out. But I, the, 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 the people that set this one up, are it, they're all former members and they're all very knowledgeable. So thankfully, there's very little I have to do on it anymore. And that's called um, godf.forummotion.com. And that, that's uh, G O O D F dot F O R U M O T I O N dot com. Uh, and that's where nearly, I think, all the former mod moderators from um, uh, Good Effort are on there, and several that, that weren't moderators but were prolific posters on there. So it is really like a home from home that everyone's back on there. However, I'm quite happy that I've not got as much to do with it because the ones that, are, that have set it up now. They're doing a lot of the uh, the troll searching, and they, they, they you, you become experienced from how they they post because what they'll try and do very subtly they'll try and drag it off topic, and the the, the mod moderators on there will, will stop them from doing that, warn them, and if they do it again they get banned. Uh, so it's we've got way more moderators looking after things, so the trolls in theory shouldn't be able to get um, get a foothold in there. Well, we've uh, the, the the link has been posted by Society of the Spectacle in uh, in the chat room. So um, anybody that can, if you go into the chat room, you'll be able to find out where that new um, that, that that new forum is. Um, but I just wanted to just get a little bit of um, because the old forum once it was taken over and it was moved and you and you'd gone from that, it just. It just died, didn't it? It's just someone's bought something that's just not even worth anything anymore, really. Well, yeah, I I, I knew exactly what would happen because uh, I could still go on there because uh, uh, I had several accounts, well, two accounts, but you know, uh, I, I could still go on there and look. And uh, as soon as I got banned, the troll influx was a massive, massive one. They they, they just got overloaded straight away. And they had to they had to lock down the news forum straight away because it got infiltrated with trolls, uh, but. 
you know, it's not, not like I've got any sympathy for them because they uh, they lied to everyone and um, basically stabbed us all in the back. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, I, I must. I, I've not checked out the the new forum, but I I, I certainly will do. I, I did do um posted in the old one. I, in fact, I posted. I uh, outed um, a guy that I knew on there who was um, part of a, a debt collection agency. Yeah. I think it was the, um, uh, I think they were called Summit Vicente or Summit Daft or Summit, anyway. Um, but anyway, I knew him. I knew who he was. Um, and he'd, be, he'd actually attended um, Tom's uh, the first day when, the first time when Tom was uh, defending his house from the bailiffs, when the bailiffs first turned up. He'd, he'd been to that, but I, I knew that he was, um, I knew exactly what he was. And, uh, well, I'd, I outed him anyway. I'd, anything else? Because we're going to do the second hour. We're, we're nearly at the fir- top of the first hour. So in the second hour, I want to talk Mandela Effect with you because um, um, I think that's, uh, it, it's a really interesting subject. So anything else you want to add to this particular part of, uh, uh, of the show and, uh, and then we can move on? Um, well, the, the meeting we had on Saturday was a, a very, very interesting one again. Um, first of all, we had a, a, a guy on talking about the September 23rd and all the alignment, and he showed us all the alignments dating back to whenever, and all the numerology and hogmon, loads of stuff connected with it. Very interesting. He got a round of, round of applause afterwards. Uh, and then we had uh, someone on talking about trust. And the trust stuff, I've got to be honest with you, I, I love it. I can see just how powerful this stuff is. Um, and I, I, everyone should have a trust. But you've got to know, it's not one of those things you just go out and do. Uh, unfortunately, you've got to watch the videos. You've got to read the books. Um now, there's a certain professor, I can't quite remember his name, but I'm sure someone will tap it in the box there. I think it's going in now. Um, um, this, this professor, he has, he's like the top trust professor. That's it. Alistair, Alistair Hudson. He's got um, a, a .com uh, web page as well. And he's, he puts his lectures actually on video on his page. And he's a brilliant one to start watching to get your head into trust if you don't know anything about them. Uh, but if you do, then you, uh, you're you still going to love what you're going to learn from them. And the, the more I've studied and the more I've researched with friends and whatnot, in fact, there was another guy at the meeting as well doing similar stuff, but from a different angle. And he may be doing a talk later um, about trust later on in the year sort of thing. And okay. they are so, so powerful. They, they, they trump just about everything. Um, it's all, and, and that's the thing. Everything, and I do mean almost everything, is what's known as a, a construed trust. It's a debtor-creditor relationship. And a construed trust, I'll give you one example of what a construed trust is. Council tax. Right. That's a construed trust. And what that means is the, the council have put you in that trust, but they don't have to tell you you're in that trust. You think you're just paying the council tax because you're supposed to or, or, or something like No, you're actually in a trust. And there are ways out of that, but that's not for me to talk about on here. That would be for someone who's done the work. I, I've just sort of like looked over their shoulder and, and been amazed at what, what, um, what, what they had going on. And it, I okay. can tell you... I, I can tell you, it's absolutely amazing what the, what what is going on with these these ones that are looking at the trust stuff. Well, brilliant. Well, uh, we're, we're at the first hour. We're at the uh, at the hour mark, and we're going to play a couple of records, which is what we do at this point in time. But when we get back, I think before we get into the Mandela effect, we should uh, talk about your meetings um, and what the the one that you were just we're referring to and any future ones as well so we'll get into that as well before uh, we we start talking about the mandela effects and getting all tinfoil out and woo woo <laughs> and everything so uh, anyway it's uh, you're listening to raconteurs news uh, i'm jason holmes it is the uh, 19th 
of uh, September. I think I've got that right this time. <laughs> 30th of September, it's Tuesday. I'm with Mark Solani, uh, my guest this evening. We're going to play a couple of records and we'll be back in about, oh, about eight, eight, eight or nine minutes or something like that. Um, with, with Mark Solani, we'll talk about We'll talk about his meetings and perhaps get a little bit more into trust and the Mandela effect. So uh, we'll see you soon. I'm gonna have some fun with this one here. Woohoo! In the morning, when I wake up, all I want is Mary Joanna. In the evening, when I'm thinking, all I want is Mary Joanna. If you look in my eyes, you'll see what I've done. 
Every minute, every hour of every day But life is like a smoke In the end I'm gonna choke So all I do is live my life from day to day Oh my God, you know you better watch your shit Because I know you're waiting on that one Cause I'm telling you guns and none Cause you know the one that said Take a for way run, you let me see you do that run Run at the wood that they clan that they would have done Cause I know you can never be me now what you wanna do Cause I'm about to break it down me Cause that's only cause you know you cannot fade me now that you wanna You better back it down now because I'm telling you What bomb, bum bum, cause I can never want that Because you know you like the way I put that pick up Cause I'm telling you your fools what type of now and in a mercy now what you want to do and in a mercy now what you want to do and in a mercy now what you want to do and in a mercy if you look in my eyes you'll see what I've done every minute every hour of every day but life is like a smoke in the end I'm gonna choke So all I do is live my life from day to day You got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crease it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, poke it, roach it, smoke it, then you pass it to me You got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crease it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, poke it, roach it, smoke it, then you pass it to me Come on, baby girl, let's get it going on. I'ma hit the highway and do it my way. It ain't no game, girl, so I don't play games. I keep it up straight, right up in your face. So make your mind up, cause life is too short. I got the vest on, boy, put your belt on. Stop acting all cool, like can you whisper? You'll be riding through the wire and the camera get on fire. You don't want that, no. I don't want that, no. This goes out to pimps and chicks, so slow, slow. Hit the back seat when you're doing the licking, kissing, squeezing. Do the damn thing, man. Woo-hoo! You got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crash it, stack it, 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 burn it, pack it, roll it, bone it, soak it, smoke it, it rip it, it, pass it to me. You got to leave it, it, stick it, bend it, crash it, stack it, stack it. Hi, I'm Andrew K. Fletcher, originator of Incline Bed Therapy, talking to you on Rack and Turn News. And welcome back to Rack and Turn News. Uh, I'm Jason Holmes. This is the 19th of September. 2017. Just give give you a bit of a uh, heads up on what's happening next week. Next week, 25th of September, um, Raconteurs 2. There won't be a Raconteurs 2 on the 25th. It's my wedding anniversary, so I've got shit to do. Um, But on the 26th, which is in a week's time on Raconteurs News, um, we've got Andrew K. Fletcher is going to be back on. He's going to be talking about um, the the inclined bed therapy and diabetes and the, the, the the, the stuff that they've been doing um, with diabetic people, which is going to be really interesting to me because I, my stepson is uh, type 1 diabetic. So uh, I, I'm hoping that there's going to be some uh, good information on that. But that's next Tuesday. But no raconteurs to next Monday unless AD decides he's going to do on um, our, He is back now from his holiday. Uh, but tonight I'm joined by uh, Mark Salon. So, uh, Mark... How are you doing? Did you enjoy your uh, little break then where we had them records played? Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I, I've got a mute button this side. <laughs> yes. <coughs> oh, I do apologise. Well, sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the Marijuana there by Heath, that was uh, the last song that we had before that. It was uh, The Earth Dies Screaming by UB40, but it was the uh, extended version without any lyrics in it it was a karaoke version i think we call it um anyway mark what were we talking about tell us about your you, you were telling us about this meeting that you had uh, this weekend 
Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Tell us a bit more about that and, and where, they, where they are and, and how often you have them. Well, it's the third Saturday of each month. Uh, and it's not my meetings. It's, it's organised by someone else. I just filmed them. Um, but it's the third Saturday of every month. It's, it starts at, it's supposed to start at 1 p.m. Uh, till 5, but sometimes it runs over. Uh, and it's at the Navigation Inn, uh, which is uh, uh, um, where the magistrates' courts are. If you walk past the magistrates' courts from the train station, it's the other side. You come up there, and there's the Navigation Inn right by the canal. And it's in there, and we go upstairs, and um, that's where the meetings are held. Yeah, I've been, I've been to a couple myself, um, and they're, they're always um, half decent, you know, good, decent information, you know, that, that, that are involved with them. So, uh, when's your next one? I'll have to check now. It's the third Saturday, so that would be October the 21st. October 21st, and that's at the Navigation in Nottingham. Yeah, the Navigation yeah. in Nottingham, yeah. And it's oh, pretty we'll, easy we'll to find. It is pretty easy to find. I mean, if you've got a sat nav, you know, you get it in there. I, I, I've been it, never had a, a single problem uh, finding it whenever I've been. So, anyway, let's uh, let's uh, let's talk about the Mandela effect. Okay, <laughs> right. How, well, what, what 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 first got you into that, and um, uh, um, and what do you make of it? Because I've got a huge interest in this. Well. Funnily enough, I, I could have got into it about three months earlier than I did. My uh, daughter mentioned it to the missus and the missus didn't pay any attention to it. And it was about three months later she mentioned it and I overheard it and I went and looked it up and like it was like, no way. How can this stuff have changed? Because the things that have changed shouldn't have changed and we've got th – there's evidence of what they were like before. I mean – the, the biggest one for me is... Yeah, I mean, it's called residue, that, isn't it? It's called residue. You know, when the, 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 the ones uh, where, where there's evidence of how it used to be, how people remember it, that, that they call that residue, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The, 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 for me, the biggest one is just residue. There's no actual evidence of what it used to be like, apart from what's in your head. And for me, it's it's got to be the Wizard of Oz. I mean, the Wizard of Oz. Do you remember them carrying anything? You got the scarecrow, the tin man, Dorothy, and the cowardly lion. Do you remember them I, carrying? I know anything? where you're going with this. I know where you're going with this because I, I listen. I when I was growing up, um, um, I was growing up in the eighties, and we were we had a video recorder when they were first out, and we'd videoed the Wizard of Oz, and we've watched it. We'd watched it as a family. <sighs> hundreds and hundreds of times yeah. hundreds of times and i know where you're going with this because it, it was as much as much of a shock to me as it was to anybody else that i've spoken to about this um but are you, are you talking about a um this scarecrow with a gun yeah the scarecrow yeah. with the gun the cowardly lion only ever used to hold his tail but now he's got a butterfly net and the tin man has got a large spanner as well as a an axe or a hammer, whichever one it is. But as well, there's other things that have changed in it as well. And there, I mean, that, the only thing that can spring to mind is that, and I'm sure if you've watched it that many times, you'll remember it, where the, the Wicked Witch goes, uh, fly, my pretties, fly. And they go off to attack Dorothy and the rest of them. Yeah. Well, it's no, longer, it's no longer that. It's now fly, fly, fly. Yeah. No, no my pretties. Yeah, none of that at all. Uh I, th I suppose Forrest Gump's a big one because you know almost everyone's seen Forrest Gump right at the beginning, where he's sat on the on the the, the the bench with the black lady next to him, and he says, "Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, except in this reality." And it's never said that. Have it, however, very interestingly, there was a. A, a, a documentary, not a documentary, a, a comedy show with the English lad that's quite tubby and I can't remember his name, but he's a tubbyist lad. Um, and he had Tom, Tom, Tom Hanks on his show and he was doing a quick run through of famous things from his um, his films. And one of them he did was Forrest Gump. And he says, life is like a box of chocolates, except right. in this reality, it's always been life was 
no, life is like. No, was like. Yeah, in this one, it's life was like a box of chocolates, where it's always been life is like a box of chocolates. But there, are, said, there are ones as well, though, that, um, that, that, that that people bring up, and I think to myself now that, that I've always known it the other way around. Um, in particular, the um, the JFK car. Um, people will say that there were only four people in it, but there wasn't. I can remember actually six because there was JFK, it's uh, Jackie, and then there was in front there was Governor Conway and uh, his uh, his wife. And then in front, there was the Secret Service guys that were driving. But there are people that swear that, that, that there was only four people in that car. Now, here's where it's probably either going to explain it all to you or make you even more muddled. <clears throat> what a lot tend to do is they think there's just, well, those that think anything about it at all, they think there's just two realities that have merged together. When in actual fact, I believe there are multiple realities that have merged together. And I, I, I did a talk last uh, November over in Hull, uh, and I was talking about this there. And the um, there was a couple. The husband said, well, he remembered it the way I remembered it. And his wife said she remembered it the way it is now. So and he said, who's right? I said, well, you're both right, but your wife is the one that's remembering it the way it is. You're remembering it the way it used to be. And so I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but that's not your wife. <laughs> it's not. It's a, it's a wife. Looks identical, almost identical things, but from a different reality. It's the only way I can justify or explain how the two, two that have lived together for all, almost all their lives and whatnot could have the different the changes. And that also explains, because I, um, I don't say that, everything that they that they put on there i i see I, I remember it some of it the way it is and this is why i'm saying it, it, it the only thing that i can logically get around that is there's been multiple realities that have merged together and apparently it's been proven that qu by quantum physics and all that sort of stuff that there are multiple realities and that's when it gets confusing uh, because say for instance when i was going to hull and I, i'm going to hull and I'm going pretty much the same way i would have gone normally but say i turned right at some point well the suggestion is for a, another reality i turned left and they and we both ended up at the the same place but we went different ways and in the, the, the other one's reality same everything happened the same except that they've got a different route to me and all happening at the same time but then when you look into it more and you start to realize that la that, that time is not the way you think it is we think as time is time is linear and it's not linear we've been deliberately brainwashed to think it's linear because if it's not linear then the the other options that we have available are massive absolutely astounding now i i don't know what has caused the mandela effect i i can only go on what others have said um and it does sound plausible that it's something to do with CERN, where they're smashing these particles together, because uh, a lot of the a lot of the research I've done into that suggests that they are actually trying to open up a wormhole to an alternate reality. Um, and if you want to go down the full dark side, it's a, 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 a demonic reality to let a load of demons come in and run amok all over the planet. Well, I've got news for most of you. The demons are already here and they're already running amok. But that's allegedly what, what others are suggesting. Now, if you look into the all the, um, the furore they did with opening this tunnel, that was an absolutely demonic dancing ceremony where they had devils coming down and all sorts. It, it, it was totally demonic. Um, and, and I absolutely believe beyond anything that those in charge are Satanists uh, trying to take us to whatever level of hell they want to take us to. Uh, and just by judging what's going off now as compared to the 70s or 80s, when I actually enjoyed the 70s and 80s. I, I might have been a kid in the 70s, but I was gr grown up enough in the 80s to enjoy it. And there was nowhere near this amount of crap going off. But that, I believe, is to do with the fact that they've been slowly edging towards 
this new world order uh, takeover dictatorship prison planet that is now becoming or starting to materialize in your faces like we were talking about earlier with the police now in black top gear and masks and no numbers so you can't identify them so basically if they've got no numbers they're just a bunch of thugs in black uniform so so do you do you think that this mandela effect is the is uh something to do with the same uh people that are doing you know we we, we know we've got a, a, a a fiat system of money we've got a corrupt corrupt governments everywhere every single place not not just not just ours but you know putin is corrupt and so is uh kim Jong un and so do, do you think it's all part of the same thing do you think the mandela effect is part of that that same structure i don't think they expected the mandela effect to happen and the first posting was in 2010 when somebody posted, and that's why it's called the Mandela effect, because somebody posted, what, what, what do you mean Mandela's still alive? I remember him dying in jail. Now, I, I, I must admit, I wasn't paying that much attention to Mandela in jail and all that sort of thing. So I don't know one way or the other. But I have no reason to dis dispute that he may, he, he may have died in a previous um, time, timeline because there's many celebrities that are still living now that have died previously or... There is a book that says that Mandela died in April 1991. There is a book that is, that is actually written yeah. in a book, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that, that, I believe, is to do with the merging of multiple realities that's happened. And I think, like I said, I think that was an accident of, uh, of the CERN uh, demonic experiment. But at the same time, I think it had to happen. And you, you still, even to this day, you'll get people saying the Mandela effect is fake. It doesn't really, it never happened, never took place. Now, if you look on YouTube, we've all you, you've heard of the statue of the thinker, yeah. Which uh, it look, looks quite a bit like what Bruce Forsyth used to, you know, the hand to the forehead and whatnot. And there's pictures on YouTube where some have gone to visit the, the, the thinker, and of course, what they do when they, a famous statue like that, you do you do the the same movement that the statue's doing. Now, these pictures were taken many years ago, but in the pictures now, the thinker no longer has his, his, his fist on his forehead. He has it on his chin. But the, those in the picture have still got it on the forehead because that's what it was like when the picture was taken. And a way I can sort of back that up, I, I, did, I did a lot of research into car badges and what I thought they actually meant. And the reason I mention this is because the VW badge used to be two Vs crossed over each other to make three Vs. And V, I believe it's in Hebrew, is six. So that actually meant 666. 666. Right. But it's no longer got that. There's now a gap. And when you check back in history from the inven invention of the VW in the 19, I think about 35, 36, it's always had that gap in it. And then I was going through some of my old videos and I noticed there was a, a VW car in it where it was, this was a 2010 car plate and it had the VW exactly as I remember it. And because it was taken, I was actually surprisingly enough filming a traffic warden at the time, but the, the car comes into it. And then someone pointed out to me, there was a video I put out about the BBC, which was um, about the BBC where they're going around with alleged detector vans and they've been poking the nose in this bloke's daughter's window. So he wasn't very happy with it. And he's there giving them all that. And he's got his camera in front in the windscreen and he comes down to get the number plate. It's only there for about three frames. And but some, one of my subscribers was watching it. Uh, Branco, Branco something or other. I can't remember his name now. But he, he said, did you see that this is there? And when I went and had a look and I, I actually then made a video about that, and played it in slow motion, where you see the full-on VW badge with no gap in it whatsoever. And it seems to be, well, it doesn't seem to be, it is, that when I was doing a talk about the VW badge, and this was back before it happened, I was doing this talk explaining about the VW being two Vs crossed to make C, uh, to, to make three, and I did a video about it, but I was zoomed in on the badge. The badge filled up the whole... Uh, screen 
When I looked at that recently, there's a gap between the V and the W now. Yeah, but you know, you'll be told that anyway. That there's there's always been that, and and I know that that's one of the other ones. But the ones for me that that make the ones for me are the ones that don't make any sense. Such as Luke, I am your father. Well, no, not not particularly that one. Um, but um, the Beatles, with a little help from my friends. What the, would you yeah. think if I sang out a tune? It doesn't even make any sense. Yes. Yeah, no, what, yeah. I mean? I, <laughs> what would I, what would you do if I sang out a tune? Makes sense. But but what would you think if I sang out a tune? Doesn't doesn't even make any sense. Would you stand up and walk out on me? Well, well, well what would you think? I'd think oh I'd stand up and walk out on you. But what would you do? Would you stand up and walk out on me? That makes sense to me. So it seems it seems as though. It, for me, when I were trying to when I were trying to describe it, and I were trying to think um, of how if if this is a, a real phenomenon, and, and and things are being changed, and I was thinking to myself, well, was that the first thing that John Lennon wrote? He wrote that first. What would you think if I sang out a tune, and then changed it afterwards to what would you do if I sang out a tune? And now I've moved into the reality where he didn't change it. You know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it can fry your brain. It can really mess you. I mean, I never watched Sex in the City, but apparently it's always been Sex and the City. Yeah, I know it was Sex in the City, and there's numerous videos on YouTube where they're at um, present presentations through the best whatever and the best actress and all that, and all the presenters call it Sex in the City. Of course, this was made before um because i think it i think it packed up about 10 years ago that sex in the city so it's made before the mandela effect had first been noticed but if it i, I was in the, uh, a charity shop recently and i saw a sex and the city dvd and i looked it in smirked and just carried on walking because i know it's changed i absolutely know it's there are things that are that, that i mean in star wars there's, there's a big who are for those start that uh, I think I'm sure you'll admit that Star Wars is a, a phenomenal film that the fans have watched time and time again, and they know every line in it. And for them, Luke, I am your father is the line that was said in our reality. Whereas in this reality, it's no, I am your father. Um, Field of dreams. Now where he's walking through the, the, the corn and he, he hears a little voice whispering. Build it and they will come. Except now it's build it and he will come, which doesn't make sense. Because if you build a baseball stadium, the players and the spectators will come. Well, who's this he that's supposed to come? There's so many things that don't make sense. And yet that's how it is. <sighs> yeah, I, I've never seen that film personally, uh, uh, but I, I have heard the quote, build it and they will come. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 I understood it to mean that if he, if he built this uh, baseball pitch, then the, the the ghosts of people would come and, and play. No, the, hence the day. Um, but but I've not seen the film. So, uh, but th th with the Mandela effect, um, there are so many uh, th different things and, and things that are really really embedded in in you that that then you, you're told are wrong like mirror mirror on the wall yeah that's a classic i mean that is i mean if you say to any absolutely anybody and i've said it to people myself i've said to them i've said look right i said snow white seven dwarfs Wicked Witch looks into the mirror and says, what? And they all, everybody, to a man, woman, child, says, mirror, mirror on the wall. And you say, no, it's not. Look it up. <laughs> yeah, they, they, do. They, they don't believe you. Then they'll go and check it up. And then they go, what the hell's going off here? That's <laughs> never, never said that before. But, yeah, that is a prime, prime example of one. Um Star Wars again, another another big one was the um, C three PO. Apparently now he's got a silver half a silver leg. leg. Yeah. Now that's that's quite interesting because what I did when I when I found out about that is I went and started looking at some of the bloopers, and in one of the bloopers, um, he, he falls over a billboard, but in that blooper he's got 
two golden legs. So when did this silver leg thing come in? It just doesn't doesn't seem to make sense. And the, the, the merging of different realities, although that sounds weird, that sort of makes sense. So it's, it's a case of, are you prepared to accept that the possibility that everything isn't as you believed it was? And I am, that was definitely the, the, the belief that everything isn't the way I believed it was, because the more you research, the more you find out nothing is the way you believed it was. But you, you, you've got to just um, go with it. And it, it's, not, it's not bad. I don't think it's bad anyway. Um, I mean, the Ford sign is another one. My, my brother, he, he bought a Ford car about three, four years ago, and he swears blind it never had that squirrely little pigtail that it's got in the F now. Uh, and there, again, some have put forward where they've got video. And I think if you look up, if you if you remember the John Thor and whatnot, where it was the, 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 the real hard police, you know, proper police in the 70s or 80s, the Sweeney. They were driving a Ford. And if you actually look at that, and if you can get close enough to the badge, you'll see that it hasn't got the squiggly pigtail on it. It seems to be only when something is, has been paid quite a bit of um, attention to. You know, like if they zoomed into the car badge, then maybe it would have had a squiggly pigtail on it. But Top Gear, that's, a, that's another one. Look in that and... It's you see the VW, the Ford, and one that I'm not sure about whether it has or not. But apparently the VW, not the VW, the um, Volks Volvo badge has changed. It apparently never used to have the the male symbol in it, which has now got an arrow sticking out of it. Um, and I, I on that one, I just can't remember whether it did or not. Yeah, it, it, it's something that I'm not really. Um... I, I don't really know the, the, the Volvo symbol at all, so uh, it's, it's, I can't really comment on whether it was or wasn't. But um, but, but there's certainly a lot of these a lot of these anomalies, uh, and it, it it does seem more than just uh, people misremembering things, because that's what people put it down to. If you get a skeptic, you get somebody who's a troll or somebody who who just just wants to. Have in fact, even somebody playing devil's advocate really could say it's just false memories that people have got. What would you say to that? I mean, because to me, as far as I'm concerned, they it, it can't be false memories. It, it just cannot be. Well, because there are, there are certain things, and I know there are some that are a little bit. Um, perhaps you, you might have misremembered or something, uh, and there and there are cert, there are ones as well that that uh, you're not familiar with, like the Berenstein bear, Bears. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, we, I mean, we're not we're in Britain. We're not familiar with that, right? So we we can we've got no actual memory of that. Uh, uh, but people will swear blind that it used to be the Berenstein Burns and Bears, and now it's the Berenstein Bears, no, and so. George. But 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 there's just like there's, there's tons of it, isn't there? It just seems too much to be a, a, like a coincidence. It, it, for this country, they would know Curious George, and Curious George used to have a tail, but now he hasn't got a tail. And the, the odd thing about that is, you can still get um, fancy dress outfits of Curious George with a tail. So if he never had a tail, why did they put a tail on it? Because that's more work than needs to be done. Mm. But then again. Oil of Ule. You remember Oil of Ule? Yes. Well, it now apparently is Oil of Ole. Yeah, I remember them changing that. I think they didn't. I think I think they changed it from Oil of Ule to Ole. So they took the O from Oil and uh, the Le from Ule. I think I think that was a change. I think if you look back, you'll you'll be able to find that the Oil of Ule still would have existed. Well, uh, what? No, apparently not. According to our producer Kev, right? I'm going to see if I can find it then uh, on uh, <laughs> Oil of Yule. Well, you've got while you're doing that, you've got the everyone's played Monopoly. Now, on your box, did he have a monocle or did he not have a monocle? Because on my box, he definitely had a monocle, but now apparently he's never had a monocle. 
In fact, I've got I've even got some um, some of the stuff that we used to do on Good F, uh, were, were pictures of the actual guy, and we actually got threatened with um, copyright for for using, and it had the monocle. But you know, okay, much- we've solved we've solved the oil of Hule thing, right? Uh, it was a name change in 1999. It was decided to unify the brand under a global name. Thus, Oil of Yulan and Yule became Ole on a worldwide basis, except in German-speaking regions in Italy, where it remained Oil of Olas. In Netherlands and Belgium, it was renamed just Olas. So uh, I, I think I find I'm right on that one, uh, uh, Kev. <laughs> you well, might be a great producer, but you know, you know, you never, you're not always right. You, you don't actually know whether that change is part of the Mandela effect. Well, well, it, it, it's in keeping with what I remember. That's all. That's all. That's all I can say. It's in well, keeping with what I remember. So, Febreze then. Mm-hmm. Febreze, F E B R E E Z E. Yeah, only got one. Only got one E in it now. You know, this spray, spray you spray on the carpets and furnitures and everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's now for Brez. No yeah. longer for Listen, Brez. Listen, I know there's tons of them. I, all, I, I'm, I'm not dissing. I, I was just saying that, that that particular one wasn't one. That's all. Well, I, I, no, well, I, I hadn't actually heard of that. It was Kevin that, that popped I, it in I, the I really, 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 really enjoy it. And I like this subject. I like watching videos on it all. I'm watching constantly when I'm cooking in kitchen. I'll, go, I'll put, I've got a smart TV in kitchen and I'll, I'll pop a, a Mandela effect video on while I'm cooking. So it, I, I, I really do love this subject. So, uh, you yeah. know. Well, give us another example. Oh, off the top of me. Well, uh, you, you mentioned one earlier with the um, uh, JFK. Now, the reason I remember four in the car is because I remember a documentary. It was done by uh, Alex Jones, and it was about the JFK assassination. And they weren't so much concentrating on, in this. It was only a short video. They weren't concentrating on the actual assassination. They were concentrating on... Just before the assassination, where the Secret Service car behind waves the two guys away from JFK's car because they're supposed to be stood on the back of his car, and the, 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 the service, Secret Service guy in the car behind waves them off, and they're like throwing their arms up. What, what do you mean? What's going on? What's go-? Because they don't know there's a hit coming on him. But in yeah. that, there was only four of them. Although I'm sure that if you watch it now, there will be six of them. And in in the um, there's a a uh, what do you call it, where they put old relics? You know, that you can go in, like the old car, for instance. And this is a museum. Oh. In a museum dedicated to JFK's assassination, they've got the car. They've got What's, a car. They haven't a got four-seater a four-seater car. A four-seater car. I agree with you. Listen, I, I agree with you. It, it, it seems that me and you are from different dimensions. <laughs> so we're never going to yeah. agree on this because I do remember the six for the simple reason when JFK, uh, the film came out, the uh, um, Oliver Stone film, when it came out, there's a scene in there and there's they do, they, they um, map the course of what they call the magic bullet, yeah. which is the magic bullet theory, which goes through JFK. Then it stops for 0.6 of a second, <laughs> and then it goes into Governor Connolly, who's in front of JFK. That so so that that that's how I remember there being six in the car rather than four. But I, I do understand that people that, that people do remember there being four four in the car. But I, and and I don't think that you know I, I'm not here sat here thinking well, well you're misremembering. I mean that's if that's your memory, that's your memory, isn't it? That's what you remember. So. The, the way I say it to everyone is whatever you recall it as, that's how it was for you. But mm. just because I recall it differently or you recall it different doesn't mean either of us are wrong. That's just the way it was for you. And now we're in a mixed reality where you remember it one way and I remember it the other. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's, it, it is a really interesting subject and there's tons and tons of films on, on it out there, isn't there? Well, they did, they did a reenactment for the uh, Warren Commission and they reenacted it with a four seater car. Now, if you're going to do a reenactment, you're going to want as accurate as possible, I would suggest. 
Well, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know whether that's uh, the, the, the validity of that at all. But uh, all I'm saying is my, my memory is, is uh, six. There were six people in car. And I know that we've got people in the chat room. We've got Mithrin, who says it was four as well. And uh, Mithrin's a former copper, so he should know what, uh, what, what he's talking about. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing I'm trying to get at here. This, this, whether it was designed to try and divide and, and, and conquer is not working the way it should do because I, I accept that you remember it your way and everyone else remembers it their way. And it's not about causing divide. It's about bringing it together and saying, well, you remember that? Well, I remember it like this. But either, hey, either way, we're both correct. It's just that maybe we do come from a different reality or, or whatever, whatever dream world you want to pretend. But what I do find interesting the most about the Mandela Effect for me, it proves that everything is changeable. I mean, because some have said that, how do you know they didn't just go back in time and change things? And yeah, they perfectly could. I'm, I'm not disputing that. I, 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 like I said, I don't know for 100% what has caused it. All I know is real and there can't be any dispute with the evidence of before it changed and after it changed, which people have, confu have, have talked about all of the planet. And the one, I tell you, the one that did it for me the most, I've been to the Caribbean a few times for holidays and uh, Dominican Republic in particular, which is a really nice place or was until this hurricane hit it again. I remember them two islands, the, the Dominican Republic and Cuba being much further over towards England, whereas now Cuba is virtually touching Florida and South America used to be pretty much below it, whereas now it's much further over to one side. And I, I remember that like it was yesterday, yet now it's changed. Also, Australia was further south than it is. Now it's virtually touching, I think it's the Philippines um, or, or somewhere like that. And it was much further south. And New Zealand was further south as well. And I, 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 when I was looking for this stuff, I was scouring. Unfortunately, the only way to catch this stuff out, and I suggest all the listeners do this, when they're watching any film or series from, you know, say 10 years ago or so, and there's a map, it, there's a map anywhere in the scene, pay close attention to the map. Even pause it and look at it, because if it's a world map, you may find things are differently. And as someone has just uh, pointed out as well, apparently the world is flat as well. And on that subject, I'm open. I really don't know because I've, I've looked into a lot of stuff they've said. And there's a lot of stuff that cannot be answered, answered with a spherical model. Uh, one of the ones that does it for me every time is if the world's rotating and you take off from London to go to New York, well, New York is moving towards you at 1,000 whatever miles an hour it's supposed to be spinning at, and you're heading towards it at five or 600 miles an hour, and it takes you 10 hours to get there. So when you're coming back from New York back to the UK, UK is spinning 1,000, I think it's about 600 miles an hour away from you. You're chasing it, and yet it still takes 10 hours. I can't explain that. It, uh, it, 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 look, the, the flat earth thing as well, it's another thing um, I've, I've perhaps took a little bit of criticism for, but I, because I gave um, a, a platform to a flat earth guy. And um, for me, it's, uh, do you know what I can't get over? I can't get over if we're a spinning ball and we've got water on us. If you've got a tennis ball that were wet and spun it round, all the water would fly off. That's that's for me is the number one. Someone can explain that to me, and not by saying there's some magical force called gravity. And not no one can explain. Is. No and, one and, can explain gravity. No one can explain gravity. So that 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 that's the one they fall back on every time. Like I say, I, I don't know one way or the other. I tend to be one of those that keeps an open mind till I have enough evidence to prove it one way or the other. It's like the Mandela effect. I absolutely know that that is a real thing that's happened. 
How it's happened, I don't fully know. I just know that it has happened. This flat earth thing, there's, 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 they've taken photos down from, from one side of, of uh, America to the other side. N not a massive distance, you know, but maybe 50 miles or so. Well, the dip in that is eight, eight inches for every dip. The, the dip in that should mean that you can't oh. see what you can see, but you can. Yeah, and but they, we, what they do is they put it, they, 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 they come up with these um, these explanations like it, it's a mirage, it's a reflection of the sky, it's a mirage. It, they, they do come up, look, I know this is nonsense, it's complete and utter nonsense. And until somebody comes up with something that's, that I'm going to accept, I'm not accepting that it's it's a mirage, it's a reflection on the sky, and that's how you can see it when it's 60 miles away. When the curvature of the Earth means it should be something like 1,900 feet below uh, b below the, um, the 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 horizon, yeah. you know. It, 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 look, if, if someone's, I, I'm I'm happy both ways. So if if someone's going to prove to me that it's a ball, I'm happy to accept that. If someone's going to prove to me that it's flat, I'm happy to accept that as well. But you see, we we we. But you see, the the, the thing is, is that at the moment, this uh, the uh, uh, the the position is it's a ball, and that's what we're taught, and that's everything. But it doesn't just does not make any sense. Yeah, but we were taught history, and that's a lie. Yeah. But with the flat earth thing, the one thing that I don't think, I'm not sure, I, I, I must admit, I don't spend that much time looking into this. So it's only if something comes along that it, it, it sort of like gets me of interest, I'll actually watch it. But I, I'm not sure if, they, if they've mentioned it or not, but if it is flat, and I'm just saying if it is flat, is it spinning? I, I don't know. Is the, you know, it's, it would seem to go against everything we've been taught and, for that in itself, I give it some credence because everything we've been taught previously has been a lie. Uh, every war has been a lie. Every every bank crash has been a lie. Everything that's happened has been controlled to the pinpoint precision, just like what's going on now. It's con controlled to the precision, except we're starting to see through it. And there was something, I, I can't remember what I was reading now, but it was something on about that. From it was either 2010 or 2012 onwards, the veil would slowly be lifted, and I would absolutely agree. The veil of secrecy has been is is being lifted, even though I I, I could see through it before that, and I guess because you could see through it a lot earlier, you see so much more that it's like, wow, look at that. But you don't mention it because, I mean, when I first started talking about. What, what I talk about, I'm a crazy guy, you know, I, and I've had it walking through town and because, you know, I tend to watch what people are doing. And as, as I'm walking past it, when, when I had a, a jumper on, say, with 9-11 was an inside job and people are walking by and they're doing the, you know, curly here and pointing to me sort of thing. And that, for me, is the epitome of ignorance. And I say that because... They've decided I'm crazy because I don't think the way it's been put out on the TV, but they will refuse to do any research to prove me wrong. That is ignorance beyond belief. Well, do you know, if um, people look and ask why would we be told that we live on a globe Earth if we don't, right? Um, do you think it's because every instinct that we have says to us that we live on a flat plane, we live on a flat plane, we're not moving, we're motionless, and, and do you think that that because they tell us, all right, you're living on, on this globe um, that's going at a 1,000 miles an hour, do you think that it, it's just so that we do not, trust our instincts uh, the, the things that tell us what 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 
is actually going on around us, our instincts. We 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 don't trust them, and and therefore we can then uh, be manipulated into into believing all, all sorts of other crap. For that, I would say look back in history, because did we not used to think the world was flat? Yep. Until apparently somehow it was proven it was round. Now how they could prove it was round because it's a bloody big place. Um, I, I, I don't know one way or the other. And I'm, like I say, I'm keeping my options open. I do know there's a lot of stuff going on that has been hidden. The North and South Poles I'm very interested in. There is stuff going on there we are not allowed to see. Uh, and if you want to know about the, I think it was the South Pole, look at the Admiral Byrd stuff. That is very, very interesting. And that was from the 40s. Um, the, 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 things are changing. We can all see that. And it's becoming obvious to everyone we have been lied to. Let's not, let's not piss about here. We've been lied to from when we were born and we'll be lied to until we realise the truth. And the truth is, Everything you know is a lie until you see the evidence that proves it otherwise. That's the way I work nowadays. I don't believe anything. Oh, I, so some people have a go at me for posting things. And I post things you know, that I haven't done. I post things because I think, well, that's interesting. Let's see what comments they get. So I post it to see what they get. But then they attack me because I've posted it. But like I said, you know, I don't care. You can say what you like. I post it for you to say what you think of it. And if you're right or wrong, it doesn't matter to me. It's just there to try and develop a conversation. So we can hopefully, you can show me some evidence that I'm wrong. And I'll happily admit, if you show me evidence I'm wrong, yeah, I was wrong about that one. I'll put my hands up. Yeah, no problem. But so far, no one's been able to show me evidence that I'm wrong. Well, I've got to say, I mean, before tonight, I'd never spoken to you. We'd met, we'd briefly spoken, you know, um, exchanged pleasantries, and I'd never spoken to you. But I've got to say, I'm really, um, I'm really impressed with the way that you wear your heart on your sleeve. You know, you, you're, you're you're behind what what you think. Um, you know, you're not you're not afraid. You know, we're talking about flat Earth, and you're 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 they're saying you know i'm open to it and everything um and then we're, we're talking about mandela effect and um and, and again it's another thing that you 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 well you you you're really open to and you're, you're really into so uh I, i'm really pleased that we've had this opportunity to to speak tonight it's been i mean it's been fantastic i i, I generally say what i feel i'm not one of these that will say one thing and mean another you know when i'm speaking i'm telling you the way i believe it uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. If, if you can prove that I'm wrong, I'll hold my hands up and say it. But if you can't prove that I'm wrong, then at least do me the decency to go and do a bit of research to try and prove me wrong. Mm. Yeah. Well, d- d- again, but you, uh, it's uh, you've done your research on all these things. You, you know, you talk about um, we, we, you talk on uh, lots of different issues and lots of different subjects. Um, what, what's what, what's next for you? What's what, what's coming up? We've got about five minutes left before we uh, we have to shut the show out. But um, so what, what's next for you, Mark? Well, for the time being, I'm con- concentrating on the court case we've got coming up, uh, and then after that, I'm I'll have time to go after things big style, and I'll be putting a lot more out. And what I say is to anyone: don't believe a word I say. Do your own research and prove me wrong. Because I, I'm capable of making mistakes just like anyone else. It's just that I've been in this for so much longer than most that, you know, you, you, it does, it gets on you at times because you know so much. And I, for example, I was in a, a local pub once uh, about five years ago and the barman knew, knew, knew me and knew I talked about loads of subjects. And because I talk about loads of subjects, he assumed I knew everything. So he starts talking to me about something that I'd never heard of. I says, oh, I don't know. I've never heard of that sort of thing because he was he was digging into, but from a different side. And that's the whole point, getting conversations going between others. And the, uh, when, when I find something out from someone else, I'm like, whoa, that's great. I didn't know that. It's like uh, this trust stuff. A mate of mine was di- di- digging into that and he's found out so much. In fact, there's a group of them doing that. And there's a group that are working on um, the gas and electric warrants. Um I believe we're at a turning point now where we're about to start getting victories one way or the other. 
Okay. I know you want me to go on more, but I, I can't because until we actually get the victory, I can't let the cat out of the bag, if you know what I mean. Because the sure. victories we've got coming are going to... It may take a, a short while, but it's going to shake this planet. Well, that sounds like something worth waiting for. So uh, No, I want it now, but we've got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, well, we've got plenty of people in the... It'd been in the chat room tonight, and it, it, it's been. I, I really wanted to read out some of the uh, messages that they put, but um, it's just been going so quickly, and I, I've sort of like been losing them um, throughout the show tonight while we've uh, while we've been chatting, chatting away um, without stuff. We've covered a lot of stuff tonight, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, if you, I'll just let my my uh, friend from not in this country know. Um, the one that posted the link earlier, Society. Uh, apparently, I'm you, by the way, according to this court case that's going on. Oh, right. You're, you're, you're him. You're Society yeah. of the Spectacle. Yeah, and he lives abroad. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> they don't, what, they don't once, rubbish stuff, don't they? Once the case is over, I can put out all, all this stuff uh, and all those that they've mentioned. Um, I, I'm multiple, multiple people uh or multiple posters and um i, I was playing out the ghost town with the, spe with the, the ghost town special is going to be played out but uh I, I have multiple um uh personalities apparently and yet funnily enough the guy that actually initiated initiated this court case he's the one with multiple personalities multiple ids and i've even got that in his evidence but hey ho you know who am I? I don't want to give too much away because it's the case is coming up. But yeah, it's it's going to be a very interesting couple of weeks, and then well, I can get down to doing some more um, serious, more stuff. Because when you've got this, I mean, this I, I can't. I, let's just say I've been to the court many, many times during this case, and have been I had the piss taken out of me for being dragged to court in the first place. Evidence non-existent, but we're coming to the point where you know you're going to have to make, make make amends for what you've said and what you've done. And I've got a feeling they're not enjoying uh, the, the present time, although they are uh, mentally not away aware, shall we say? All right, Mark. Well, a great big thank you for joining us tonight. Um, it's been a it, it's been a pleasure. A couple of hours chatting. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I have done, but I really have done. So um, thank you very much for coming along, uh, being on Raconteurs News tonight. Uh, right. Okay. Next week we've got Andrew K. Fletcher on. Uh, yeah, that, the twenty sixth. No Raconteurs two on the twenty fifth because it's my wedding anniversary. Uh, uh, and on October the 3rd, Neil Sanders, who was uh, who had to cancel last night, had a bit of an emergency. Um, he's going to be coming on on um, October the 3rd. But remember, we're going to be doing 7 till 9. So it's going to be 7 till 9 on a Tuesday night um, in, rather than 8 till 10. Uh, from now on, it's going to be 7 till 9. But uh, thank you very much to Kev for producing for me tonight. Um, thank you very much to Mark Salon. It, it's been a, an absolute pleasure. Uh, we'll see you next week and uh, take care. ta -ra -ra bit. Bye.
Tony Moran, WBF Cruiserweight World Champion, speaking on Rack and Tear News.